I would like to presume to talk with you on the general subject, positive thinking and successful living. Now, these two are opposite sides of the same coin. They fit together like a hand in a glove, like Siamese twins. Really, it's most difficult to live a successful life thinking negatively. Only positive thinking contributes to successful living. Are you living a successful life? Am I? What is a successful life? To be elected governor of the state or United States senator or to make a lot of money or to get your name in the paper or to be among the socially elite is this success well conceivably it could be if the basic requirement is met I define successful living as to be a whole, well-organized, well-controlled human being in charge of yourself, not weak, vacillating, negative, but entirely normal, happy, peaceful, not without trouble, because anybody without trouble or difficulty is bound to be abnormal. Because Almighty God, when he created the universe, allowed this thing called difficulty, pain, sorrow, hardship, to be part of the mixture. Why? Well, I think it was to make strong people. And you never make strong people without resistance to difficulty. Well, are we successful people? You can be successful by becoming a positive thinker. Now, I have talked on this subject for years, and some people think I am a preacher of positive thinking. I'm not. I am, with all my limitations, a preacher of the Lord Jesus Christ, Savior of the world, who redeems people by his blood shed on Calvary. That's basic. But the Bible is filled with a type of admonition and advice and counsel which we can relate to our thought processes. The Bible tells us that what we are is determined by what goes on from the eyes on up to the top of the head. That is the area in which is located the brain. It averages about two and a half pounds of tissue. And that is you. What you see in the mirror is your face. That's your front. But what is up here in the skull is what you are. As a person thinketh in his heart, 
That is, in the subconscious, not the physical organism known as the heart, but in the heart of him, the essence of him. As he thinks in the essence of him, that is what he is. You never can see that unless you have a surgeon cut your brain in two and lay it out, then you wouldn't be around to see it. No circumstance. Now, the Bible also says in the 12th chapter of Romans, verse 2, written by one of the greatest thinkers in human history. In fact, a Wall Street international banker told me, and he should know because these are the wise men of our time, he told me that the most acute mind in all the history of mankind is St. Paul. And he goes down to his office every morning at 7 o'clock to read the Bible from 7 to 8, and he reads St. Paul in order to sharpen his mind on the most uh, profound intellect ever to live. He sharpens his mind like a farmer sharpens a scythe so that he can handle business better for the day. He's also become a very spiritual man. And St. Paul said, if you want to change, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. That is, to stop being a negative thinker and start being a positive thinker. Are you happy with what you are right now in life? Is everything simply wonderful? I hope so. But on the basis of the law of averages, we've got people here, indeed the man talking to you is one of them, who would like to do better, be better, achieve better, be more successful, according to the definition I gave earlier. How do you do it? St. Paul says, be transformed by the renewing, the changing of your mind. Now, this can actually work miracles. Some of you are acquainted with our magazine, Guidepost, which now has three and three quarters million paid subscribers, making it the 14th largest magazine in the United States of any kind. And on our magazine, we have a wonderful writer by the name of Dick Schneider. Dick knows how to interview. He knows how to get a story and how to produce it. Now, he has a story coming up about a town in this country of 56,000 population. It's situated on a bluff overlooking a great river, surrounded by beautiful lands. But this town fell on evil days. It began to decline. It became shabby. Business was bad. The people were without hope. The school system deteriorated until it was probably the worst in the state. According to the Educational Development Score, it rated 38. The school system was treated with contempt. Everything in the town's life was bad. Now, over in India was a young man 
who wanted to come to America, land of his dreams. And he came to a Midwestern college. He was a Hindu. He was taken under the wing of a Christian family who gave him a Bible. He had never seen a Bible before. And they told him to start with Matthew and start reading about Jesus. They didn't try to convert him to Christianity. But being a sharp boy, he read the Bible, and the Bible's truth grabbed him, and he was himself converted, and he followed the Lord. And then he read some other books based on the Bible, and he became a thoroughgoing, positive person. He got his degree, he stayed in college, got a PhD in education, became the superintendent of schools of a small college, of a small town of about 12,000 people. Then this other town that I previously had described called him to become superintendent of their schools. He went out to see the town and asked about the schools, and the first man he met said, don't come to this school system. It's the worst in the state. It's the worst in the nation. It's the worst in the world. I wouldn't send a dog to these public schools. <laughs> All up and down the streets of the town, this was the information that he received. So he began to think, maybe I'd better stay where I am. So he went back home, and they were having dinner, and he told his family why he wasn't going to go to this place. His young son spoke up, and he said, Look, Dad, I always thought that you said that by the help of the Lord and positive thinking, anything could be changed. He changed his mind, and he went to this town. Now, he walks into the town from the airport. That is, he didn't actually walk in from the airport. He came into the town from the airport, and he went to the school, and he stood up before the students, and he looked them over about like this, and he said, I never saw such wonderful young people. You are terrific. And I've come here because I want to be associated with the greatest young people in the world. Don't tell anybody I told you, but you're the smartest kids that I've ever seen. And they straightened up. Nobody had ever told them they were smart before. He went to the Rotary Club and he said, you know, you people here have the finest city I have ever been in. He said, I've walked down the riverbank and I've watched that lordly river flowing down through the greatest country God ever made. The pioneers built this town. This is one of the most wonderful towns in the whole United States. Every night after school, he would bring a busload of these kids into the superintendent's office, and he would tell them about the potential they had. In three years' time, the educational score of this town went up from 38 to 78. And every year now, the big day of the town isn't Christmas, nor Easter, nor the 4th of July, but it's local Pride Day. One man made over a town because he was an enthusiastic follower of the Lord and a great believer in people and a great believer in the United States and a great believer in life. That's what can be done by somebody who is filled with enthusiasm, faith, positiveness, 
and devotion to Almighty God. <laughs> That's the way it works. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Every time I talk to a reporter about positive thinking, they say to me, well, what about all these problems we have today, like inflation and everything? The media seems to be 100% against being positive. They want everything bad so they can write about it. If everything got good, we'd have nothing to write about. So they keep it bad. No, they don't actually do that, but they're happy that it remains bad. Why, well, positive thinking works miracles. If you don't think it does, listen to this letter. I was about to say get a load of this, but... <laughs> That's what I said to my wife when I read her this letter the other day. And she says that wasn't dignified. <laughs> now, you, <laughs> this is one of the greatest testimonies to positive thinking I ever received, and I've received thousands of letters. This is from a Colorado farmer's wife, the salt of the earth. And I like her. Her name is Darlene. That's her front name. She, that's, that's a constriction for darling, I'm sure. I like her anyway. Dear Dr. Peel, my husband and I have been receiving guideposts for almost two years now. And I wanted to let you know it has changed our lives definitely for the better, positively. When we subscribed, we were sent a little booklet on how to learn to live each day expecting a miracle. Yeah, we did have a little booklet called Expect a Miracle. And if you expect them, you'll get them. If you don't expect them, you won't get them. We both thought that idea sounded good, and we began right away expecting miracles positively. Now listen to this. Within two weeks, one of our cows had twin bull calves. And within two weeks, another of our cows, and within two weeks, another cow had twin heifer calves. Now I wouldn't expect you on Fifth Avenue to know the difference between heifers and bulls. <laughs> But that is something. Now, not only did we save both sets of twins, but they are the first twins born on this place we own in over 160 years. How is that for positive thinking? <laughs> How they know about what was born 160 years ago, I don't know. But, uh, I like this lady. Approximately three months later, I was driving to work one morning and lost control of my car on a country road, and I started fishtailing. I started thinking possibly and expecting a miracle. Before I knew it, I was on a bridge. Hit it twice, but did not go over. This was truly a miracle, and I was not hurt, let alone killed. Just recently, we had a cow have a baby calf and was moving her to a barn near the house. One of our dogs wanted to see the new baby and the cow went after the dog. I was in the way and the cow slammed me up against the barn and then jumped over me. <laughs> Not only did I walk away with only bruises, but nothing was broken. I truly believe that God watches over us if you believe that he does. Recently, we had a chance to do a little investing. We had to borrow the money to do it, but we believed God had directed this investment program into our hands. Sure enough, in less than six weeks, we have received over $10,000 back on this investment. Now, I don't want to 
bring anything materialistic into this, but I just thought I'd refer to this in as much as we're raising the Easter offering. <laughs> Since you have helped us in the last few months, we're sharing a part of good fortune with you. Please find and close our personal check for your work in the amount of $300. Well, now that's not 10% of 10,000, but it's a move in the right direction. <laughs> what you think tends to come to pass. Send out negative thoughts and you do a very dangerous thing. You activate the world around you negatively with negative impulses that are working. And you constantly send out these negative thoughts activating the world around you negatively. In the very nature of the case, you tend to draw back to yourself negative results. Don't do it. It's an error. If on the contrary, Send out positive thoughts. You activate the world around you positively. And on the very nature of that case, you tend to draw back to yourself positive results. Be transformed. Be your whole life transformed. Be your whole community transformed. Be the world transformed by the changing of your mind. I met a couple. They are about 50 and 45. The man being 50, the wife being 45. They are both half sick. That is, they wake up in the morning feeling sick. Things aren't going well. They're both tense. They're both nervous. All the time at breakfast, they tell each other how badly they failed and how badly they slept the night before. They went to the doctor, and the doctor told them to see a pastor, so they saw me. I gave them a little booklet that we have called Thought Conditioners. As you can air condition a room, so you can thought condition the mind. Forty scripture passages. Told them to soak their consciousness with these passages. And in the morning, when the wife says to him, how do you feel this morning? He said, terrific. And she was to say the same. And following the terrific praise the Lord. These people are on the way to being well, healthy, whole, successful, if they continue this treatment. Be you transformed, so it says, by the renewing of your mind. So think new thoughts, God thoughts, Jesus thoughts, hope thoughts, goodness thoughts, healthy thoughts, and life will be happier than you have known it in years. Our Heavenly Father, we've tried to outline very profound truths in a very simple way. These truths make life. They're healthy. They're creative. They're positive. They're wholesome. Help us to take this positive truth and integrate it into our consciousness so that it will become directive and creative in our lives.
through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.